Hi, my name is Dale Carroll. I'm formerly of Texas. I now live in Chowchilla, California, and I train calf roping horses for a living. I've been training calf roping horses successfully for about 30, 35 years, and a calf roping horse can either make you or break you in the calf roping run. He's about 75%, and a good calf roping horse is vital to winning money on the rodeo trail. And so I hope through this video that I can help you understand your horse and get along with him better throughout your opening career. All right, the first thing we're gonna start with is saddling the horse. That's the very first thing you do when you're starting to go to the roping pen. Now I use this soft pad next to the horse's back. It's a double Navajo and it's not very bulky. And so you put it on the horse's back first because you wanna keep the soft pads to the horse's back. All right, the next pad is your, is your hard pad because you don't want the bulk. The more pads you get on the horse's back, the further away from the back it takes the saddle. And you use this cutout pad so it will adjust because all horses are not built the same, so the weathers fit right in here and of the horse's back so it'll adjust the saddle it's, that you use. Okay, so you put it on. All right, and next, is this, next comes the saddle. Now, it is important to get that saddle fit down just right and your pads even and level on the horse's back. And you want them staggered just a little bit like this right here. You want this pad a little bit forward and this pad a little bit backwards so when you get the jerk, it don't slide forward on your horse's back because you do not want your saddle moving around. All right, now here you need quite a bit of room. People uh, don't like to say, they want to keep a horse's, uh, the saddle to the horse's back. But I like just a little more slack in here than most people because whenever you cinch the saddle down tight and then you get on and then you have the weight of the calf jerk on the horse, it needs to be up just a little bit higher than most people like to, to say. So I need my saddle up just a little bit higher on the horse's back. All right, now we're gonna girt the horse. All right, I like to have a nice, wide, soft mohair girt for the front. Okay, now we're just saddling him here. So when you first saddle your horse, well you just snug him up just a little bit because a lot of horses are cinching everything and getting used to the girth, just snug it up a little bit. Now, before you rope, you gotta really tighten it down tight. And that's why I go for this kind of a latigo in the back to the back girth and a nice wide back cinch for the back girth because he takes a lot of jerk on his belly. He takes, that's where they get most of the jerk and it's important to keep him good and tight behind. You want both girths good and tight when you're roping. Now when you saddle him up, you just snug him a little bit like that. But, but whenever you get him ready to, you're getting ready to rope, you want him uh, girded real tight in front and the back because all the jerk comes like this. It comes from the back forward and you raise the back of the saddle up and push it down and forward. So you want the distance between your girts here and you want them tight, real good and tight when you're roping. All right, and next we'll go to the, to the bell boots. Now these bell boots come in two different kinds. There's rubber and these are the Velcro ones. The rubber are just as good, but the Velcro ones are just a little easier to put on. Now the reason you use these is because when the horse is running and turning and stopping and everything, he hits his front feet with his back feet. And it cuts him all along the cornet bend here and everything, and it causes him to kind of be crippled. So uh, what you want to do is you put these on good and snug and Velcro them in. All right, now we're gonna to go to the skid boots. And when the horse stops, he's liable to burn himself under here if you don't have these on. And so that'll make him sore, that'll make him quit stopping. So you take these skid boots and you put them on, and I always buckle the bottoms of them first, and you buckle them just good and snug, not real tight, not real loose. Then I pull the back part up and I girdy it up, buckle it up, just good and snug in the top. And now it fits real good and snug, and when he stops, they don't turn or anything, and they stay in place. Okay, now next, we'll go to the bridle of the horse. All right, now whenever I start a horse to, to make a roping horse out of him, he should be broke as well as you can get him broke. That's the first thing you have to do. All right, then whenever you start roping on him, then you have to take him out. Most people start him in a snaffle. Then you have to take him out of a snaffle, or a hackamore, or whatever you put him in, and then put him into these other bridles. Now whenever I come, whenever they come out of a snapper, 
I put them in this bridle here. It's a snaffle mouthpiece with cheeks on it. And that starts them to getting to where they handle a little bit with one hand instead of two hands. And then the, the, the uh, tie down I put them in, whenever I put them in the, the first bridle, will be a soft tie down like this. Nothing, nothing hard, and you don't tie their head down tight. You just tie it down to where whenever they get their head way up, they bump it just a little bit. All right. Then the next bridle I go into after that will be something to this sort. It's broke in four places, and it's got a port here, and it's got a curved chain on it, and it's got a little bit more bite and a little bit more pull to them. Okay. And then you can go to a hackamore bit, like this right here. And that makes them pick up their head a little bit more whenever they stop and put their front feet out and they get the balance. And that's how they stop with their, their head up and their front feet out where they get balance. And then if a horse gets more aggressive, you can go to an iron tie down. It's a little stiffer tie down. And it bumps them and makes them back out of there just a little bit more. Okay, the bridle and tie down system I use on this particular horse here, uh, he's uh, more along, further along now and everything. So I use this bridle and tie down. I'm going to show you how to fit it on him and stuff like that. All right, we'll uh, show you how to put the tie down on him to start with. The tie down that I use on this horse, he's not real aggressive, he's real a hard stopping horse, is the light tie down, like this right here. You put it on him just like this, and you have it fixed where it pulls right under these little cheekbones right here. And that's where you want to have it sit. Just about so. And, and then you go to the bridle, and this is a bridle with kind of a high port, and it's not very severe, and it's, and it's short shanked and everything, and the curb chain is loose, and so you put it on him. Okay, now your tie down, you tie it, you hook it under here to this ring on your dirt, and you want it where it kind of touches neck like that. And you want it to where the tie down don't hit him until he gets his head up here to the end of his stop, just like this. And that's what he braces on. And uh, so he can put his feet out, his front feet out, to uh, stop and everything and brace to get for the jerk. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a calf in the lane here and I'm going to run him around and around and let the horse follow him. And the horse will follow him and I'll keep the calf against the fence and I'll, keep, I'll run the horse up behind the calf and keep him a little bit over to the right. Because you get a straight go at the calf like that. Whenever you rope and the calf is over to the right a little bit, it's got a tendency when the horse stops and you're tied hard and fast, it's for the calf to roll a little bit like that and everything gets out of, out of line and out of focus. So you want the calf right straight in front of you or a little bit over to the left for a right-handed man. And then you get them kind of in the crossfire and you get the straight jerk to where you can go right down and take care of business right straight in front of you there. And I put the breakaway on the horse and I run the calf around and around and I rope him with the breakaway and it breaks off the calf and it teaches the horse to stop and it don't hurt the calf and don't wear him out and without any weight on the horse and everything. So he kind of gets a general idea of what we're doing. He gets used to the rope and he gets used to following the calf. And then the next step will be to put him in the chute and then start roping from the chute. All right, here we are in the lane now behind the calf. It's important to start a horse in the lane with a slow calf so you can keep the horse right behind the calf at all times. And here I go and I bring the horse around behind the calf again and I start off, I keep him right behind the calf through the duck, take the calf over to the fence, keep the horse right in position, then I reach and rope. Stop the horse and back him up. It's very important to stop him and back him up three or four steps every time. This gets him programmed to stop and back up like you do whenever you rope in the arena.
Now I stop him there and let him pause for just a minute and tie my brake away to keep him cool because a horse, when you rope on him, he has a tendency to get a little bit jacked up and a little bit nervous. So you just kind of calm him down a little bit and let him stand there and relax while I tie my brake away. And that gives him time to cool down a little bit because you have to keep a young horse really cool so he'll understand what you're trying to do with him and everything. And he won't learn when he gets hot and mad. So you keep him really cool there and just let him unwind just a little bit. Then you reach and pet him there just a little bit to keep his confidence, to let him know that he's done a good job. And then you ride him off with his head down, relaxed, and start all over again. On this run, I'll show you actually how the breakaway works when I rope the calf. All right, again, I position the horse right behind the calf, get everything just exactly perfect, reach and rope, stop the horse, and back him up. It's very important to stop him and back him up every time you rope to get it in his program. talk about the box work a little bit in the barrier here a horse you need to keep him free in here you need to keep him calm as much as possible because you don't want him moving around because you've got to watch the calf in order to get a perfect start you've got to let the calf to where you want to and then you leave and if he's jumping around you can't do that so you ride him in I ride mine in about a foot or two from the rail of the box here right into the center turn him around turn him back right here to the V have his back end right in the V of this box and his head right at that pin right there. That's the longest distance you have to run because whenever they string the barrier across there, whenever you, the more you break to the center of the outside of the box, you shorten up your start. In other words, you're going to get to the barrier that much quicker. From right about right here, a little off center of the box to that pin, well, you'll have a three feet longer start if you'll run at the pin. So you back the horse in here, you get him at this position, get him standing up, Move his head out of your way just a little bitty bit like that so you can see the calf and you don't ever lose sight of the calf whenever the calf breaks. You're looking right here and you see a point that you want to see on the calf, like you've got to see his shoulder, middle of his back, or his hip to the pin before you leave. That's the way to get a start. So you sit right here and you're looking for a particular place on the calf. So you sit right here and you keep his head out of your way just a little bit where you can see and he never moves his head in your way and so you can watch that calf move right on out and whenever he gets that certain point you can leave. All right, you want to keep him where you can ride him up like that and back him up like this and keep him free in here and I do a lot. Every time I ride in the barrier to rodeo, I back my horse in. I don't care if he's standing straight or not. I always ride him up and back him up a couple of times. That's just to let my nerves settle a little bit and the horse's nerves settle a little bit. Because if you do it every time, he'll get used to it and he won't get tight. So many people bring them in here, turn them around and job them back in this corner and pull them back in here like this and crouch them in the box and the horses get to work, they hate to be in here. And they'll back up and they'll just lay down on the back of this box here and just sit down on it like that and then you can't get a good start. If you try to ride them up, they'll just jump and throw a fit or if the gate rattles or anything like that. So that's what I like to do. I like to ride them in here and back them up. And even if they are good, I ride them up a few steps and back them up again. And then if anything happens up there, the calf turns his head or anything, there's any waiting around for something up there to happen, you ride up a little, just a little bit, back him up, keep him free in here, move him over, move his front end out of your way just a little bit like this, and then you break right at the pin. All right, now whenever the gate's open, your horse will take, a, he might tense up a little bit. So many people, they're standing like this and they hold the reins. You hold just enough tension on the reins to keep the horse standing 
straight. You don't want to pull him back in here. Just stand in natural. All right, now whenever the gates rattle and he starts to tense up a little bit, so many people will come back here with the reins like this and pull the horse up and everything. What you want to do is just like kind of like putting the brakes on your car. You just kind of ease them to the wherever you want to stop. All right, I just hold enough tension on the reins to keep him here and keep him standing on the ground. I don't pull him too much like that. I just keep enough tension on the reins to keep, I keep the slack out of the reins about like that. Just enough to keep him standing upright where he's not squatting. And whenever I get the calf to the point that I want to see on the calf, then I will just drop the reins forward like that and leave. And that's the way you get a good start. You keep the horse on balance. You can leave all at one time and a good start. And calf roping is very, very important. After you get the horse where he follows the calf properly in the pin, in the pin roping, then you go and put him in the box and get ready to rope out of the box. You're still in the lane. You back the horse up, you get him standing properly and square, take it, let him run after the calf on his own, position the calf real good, then cut it loose, make him stop and back up. It's very important that you stop him and back him up whether you catch or miss. Remember, it is real important to keep the horse relaxed and his head straight when asking for the calf. Okay, he's in the box again now. He's all squared up, good and straight, standing still. The calf comes out, he runs on his own. Stay right in behind him, bank him off the fence, reach and cut it loose, stop him and back him up. All right, now I'm going to talk about some of the ropes I use. I use two different ropes. This is the breakaway. This is the first rope I use. And this is to rope on the horse when he's green so it breaks away from the calf, does not jerk the horse till he learns how to stop. All right, I just take a regular ring and put it on a rope like this. All right, then I get a piece of string. I run it through the loop, through the ring, and I tie it in an overhand knot like this. All right, and then you've got a loop that you can swing and it will feed and you can rope a calf tight and it won't break until it gets a jerk. All right, the next rope I use is the one I tie down with. It's like this. It's just a regular rope, but I have a little different way of doing it. I take and I take a piece of rope, a nylon cord, and tie a knot around my rope about 18 or 24 inches back according to where you hold your hand is where you want to tie it. All right. This is to, so that whenever the rope tightens around the calf's neck like that, you can get a good jerk. It will be tight, but it will not choke the calf, and it will save your calves. And if you want to take it off of the calf, it will give you just a little room to slide your hand in between the calf's neck and the rope and to pull it off of the calf. And it's got good balance and it swings good. You can feed it good and everything. Okay, now we'll go to the jerk line. This is a jerk line. I tie it around the bridle like this in a knot. Any kind of knot's fine. And some bridles have a bar across here, and you can tie the jerk line into the bar. All right, this jerk line is run up to a pulley, tied on the saddle horn with a little bit of rope. All right, you put the rope, the jerk line, in your belt, and take your tucks like this, so whenever you get off and run down to the calf, the rope pulls, as you go down, the rope pulls back on the horse like that and makes him back up and it pulls out of your belt like that. All right, this is the neck rope that you run your rope through, you tie it around the horse's neck in any kind of a knot. 
an overhand knot or any kind. I tie a square knot. All right. Then I take this keeper. I tie it into the tie down with just an overhand knot. Like this. This keeps the horse's head towards the calf at all time. If he tries to turn his head and walk off or run off, he can't run off. It'll keep his head towards the calf and keep you from getting hurt, keep you from getting tangled up in the rope. Okay. Now I take my rope and so it will tighten down. I take a little couple of little curls in the rope like so. So it will tighten up good and tight on the saddle horn, like that. Okay, I run it through the keeper, through the neck rope, and up the saddle horn, just like this, and pull it real good and tight so that you don't get your fingers in it so whenever the calf hits the end of the rope, and you get the jerk on the saddle horn, you don't get your fingers in there and cut them off. And that's the ropes and equipment I use in training horses. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to make the horse back up on the rope properly. I take the rope off the saddle horn and I teach him to back up with pressure. I talk to him a little bit as I go along. I pull the rope out in front and I just kind of get his attention there a little bit and I pull on the rope and I say back and I feed him some rope. I let him back and I feed him a little rope. Like that. And he gets to where he's reacting to the pressure. Now he's reacting to the pressure a little bit better. Now I feed him a little slack and he backs up. And then I say whoa to make him stop. And then I pull on the rope a little bit and he backs up. And then I say whoa and he stops. And that's how to make him back up a, like that. He's not backing up wild, he's not backing up erratic, he's just backing up nice and slow and easy and that's the way you want one to work the rope. And they work the rope by pressure, not by being scared. Whenever you pull the pressure, back up. Feed him a little slack, let him back up, say whoa and then he stops and he stands there correctly and that's the way I like for my horses to back up. Now what I'm going to do is call logging the horse. After you teach him to back up with just a tug on the rope then you want to put a little weight on them before you rope a calf so they'll know how to back up and have the feel of weight before you actually put a calf on the end of it. All right, what I use is a cross tie like this. Now you don't want to, I don't want a heavy load, but I don't want a real light one. Just something, it'll just pull, and you can either put another cross tie on this if you want more weight, or leave it like this. I put a rope around it like this. Then I come here, this way, pick up the end of the rope, run it through the keeper, through the neck rope, onto the saddle horn here, and secure it real tight. Then I slip the reins over his head. Now, I just start him backing up like I did a while ago. Real slow. Take the slack out. Real slow. Take, take, you keep taking the slack out. So the rope comes tight. Then I make him pull the log up to me with the weight on the end of it like that. And I ease him back a little bit. Okay, when he gets the log to me like that, I stand on the log and make him hold the rope tight with my weight on the log. And then I, I may step off the log, make him pull it a little bit, Pull it back up to me, step on the log, make him stop working so that I can tie, if this was a calf, so I can tie the calf and he holds the rope good and tight on the end of it and he don't mess around. This horse is not scared, he's working the rope just uh, automatically and keeping it tight. 
And so that's the way I like to train them. And you back them up and you do this. I don't spend a lot of time on the log like this. I do it for a couple of days and then I go right to the cast because I think you ought to log them with what, you, what you're working with. And that's why I spend a lot more time on the calves, necessarily more than on the log. All right, now I'm getting ready to tie down the calf on the horse in the lane. Uh, I've got him to where he will follow the calf, stop and back up properly, score properly out of the chute. And so now what I'm gonna do is tie a calf down. I'm gonna take him in the chute, turn him around, square him up, then I'm gonna let the calf out, let him ease up behind him using a slow calf. I'm gonna rope the calf, handle my slack low, get off slow, go down the rope slow, tie the calf slow just to keep the horse working so as not to scare him where he will be at ease. All right, now I'm going in the box. I'm gonna turn the horse towards the calf, back him up, square him up, let him relax a little bit, let the calf out, ease up behind him, square him up good, get him in position, rope hard, down the slack low, stay on the horse, get off, go down the rope, flank, tie the calf slow in order not to upset the horse. Now I'm going to ride in the box. I've roped a couple of calves. I'm going to back him up and square him up and score one just to keep him free and relaxed because he is a young horse and we're just starting him out in the lane for the first time. And so we score, always score to keep him relaxed. When they start getting a little tight, score. I want to stress it's very important to handle your slack low and stay with the horse in the stop so as not to scare him whenever you get off and go down the rope to tie the calf. In order to teach the horse to stay alive on the rope, I go down the rope, pull the calf towards me with my back to the horse, shake the rope at the horse. You always wanna keep your back to the horse because you're going down the rope. You don't wanna turn and face him and make him work. Keep your back to him because you've always got your back to him whenever you're roping at the rodeo and tying the calf. All right, everything's starting to come together pretty good now. The horse is starting to stop harder and stay in his stop with more force, and now you can get off a little faster from now on. All right, now whenever I go to find a horse, I like a nice looking horse. Everybody does, and an athletic horse. I like him to have a nice short head, a big round brown eye, a little pin ear, and a thin throat latch. I like him to have a short neck, fits into his weather's good for balance. I like him to have a sloping shoulder, beat up good in front, a nice smooth bone, not particularly a big bone, but just a smooth bone. I like him to be short on top, and long underneath. I like him to have a nice long hip, sloping hip, a nice tail set, 
with good Gaskin muscle and be squared up behind and his feet under him good. And that's what I look for in a young horse. Now I'm going to show you the jerk line in action. The jerk line is the cotton rope going from the bridle through the pulley into my belt. I'll run the horse up, rope, and dismount. And as I'm going down the rope, the jerk line will pull back on the horse's bridle and make him back up. Okay, now you can see the jerk line come across my body and out of my belt and you can see the horse starting to back up it's starting to tug on his head and then you will see it the horse get to the back of the rope the jerk line's releasing now he's working on his own and the jerk line is hanging down not to get in the way of the horse and the rider On this run, I'm going to go slow one last time to give you a good review on how the jerk line works in action. I've showed you how to start and bring the young horse along. After you've gone through all the steps and completed them properly, then you've got the finished horse.
Okay, we've done a lot of roping today and done a lot of things about everything that it takes to train your horse. And I want to thank you for taking time to watch my video. And I think the main thing is to use your head and take patience with your horse. And just don't try to rush anything. Don't have a completion date on your horse. Just, if he's working good, when the roping comes, take him. If he's not, wait till the next roping because a completion date will really mess you up. And so I think if you just take the time, like I said, you will enjoy your horse and you will enjoy training your next horse a lot more.